Good morning, uh, and thank you very much for showing up that early today. <laughs> Did you sleep well last night? Well, I, I slept very well because uh, somebody recommended me to have the raki at the bar. <laughs> yeah, so I <laughs> I did not wake up for my alarm. So um, today I'm going to talk about Suzy AI. Suzy AI is um, an open source project developed by Force Asia community. It is um, a framework for um, conversational assistance or personal assistance. Um, something that uh, similar to Alexa Eco or um, Google Home. And what I'm going to do today, so I'm going to do uh, some little bit of introduction about the, uh, the project, what is our motivation, why we started the project, and then I do a little bit of um, uh, update on current development, uh, different components and clients that uh, we developed during, um, like throughout the stack of uh, Suzy AI. But before that, how many of you were not here yesterday for the lightning talks? But you were here. Were not here. Were not here. Okay, then I will do again uh, the introduction. So my name is uh, Hong Phuc Dang, uh, and what you, the, the character that you see online is how we written it in Vietnamese. Uh, I'm originally from Vietnam. I founded uh, Force Asia since 2009 and also an active contributor to different projects at Force Asia. I grew up in Vietnam, uh, but right now I work uh, in Berlin and regular travel to Singapore, Southeast Asia, China, and India. So what I, what I do is like my job or what I'm good at. So I am um, building community. Uh, I'm doing developer engagement. Uh, I develop uh, content for education and training. And I'm passionate about um, inner source, which is uh, the idea of apply open source best practices in cooperation and understand how the open source culture can help companies uh, to grow their development and how they interact with the community. Uh, I organize events, so I have a lot of experience in organizing events because we, we did many. Uh, so, and some of the events that I often go to, all the events that are organized by Force Asia, the Open Tech Summit in China or in Berlin, uh, Yuga Fest, one of uh, the events that we organize every year in India, Force Asia Summit, our signature event happened in Singapore every year in March. Um, I go to Fostum uh, regularly, uh, CCC, so I've been the past four years at the CCC. I also sometimes go to the Open Source Summit, and this is my first time in OpenFest, and I hope that it's going to be my regular event that I would go to every year. I really like it here. Uh, one of my favorite hobbies is swimming. Even though I don't look so sporty, I really like to swim. So that is the only thing that I care about next to open source. On the map here, you can see my, um, it's, not so, uh, can see, it's not so clear, but the Kento is my hometown. Very south of Vietnam, um, next to um, Cambodia, go to the in the Mekong region. Uh, the reason why I showed it map because um, in my hometown I often host open source developers at our place. So sometimes people stay for two or three weeks at our at our home. So if you ever travel to Vietnam and you need a place to stay, you are welcome at our home. And we I can guarantee that we have the best internet in town, the fastest one. Okay, a little bit about Force Asia. So Force Asia is the network of people who care about open source technologies and who, who want to do some cool thing with uh, uh, free software. Uh, we develop a lot of solutions, but more of focus on Asia community. So most of our developers are come from India, um, Vietnam, and uh, in the region. This is a picture taken in 2016. You can see one of the at the Force Asia Summit in Singapore. Okay, uh, a screenshot of some of our um, developers. A little bit about uh, the Force Asia work before I come to why we started the Suzy AI project. I would uh, let me yesterday. So I was staffers with the um, 
uh, the coding program that we run every year. So this is called Code Hit. So basically, uh, developer can participate in the contest by contribute code or so issue on GitHub of different for this project. And uh, after a few uh, months, the top 10 people, they will win travel um, uh, sponsorship or they will get, get a fly to, to come to the Force Asia Summit to present their project. Uh, this is the website of the Force Asia Summit 2019, which is our 10th anniversary. If you want to apply for the talk, you can go to the website. And this is some of the project. If you go to the labs, uh, dogforceasia.org, so it lists all the project that we've been working on. From so we have uh, one event management system uh, to have organized there to organize events like the Open Fast or of the Force Asia Summit. Uh, they have many different features and function. Uh, we have our, we build our own um, uh, distribution uh, search engine. And before we um, initiated the SUSE AI project, it was uh, LockLack. A little bit about LockLack. So uh, this is a, um, a tweet scrapper. So basically to collect media data from various websites. Uh, it started in, the, I believe, in 2014 at the Force Asia Summit in Phnom Penh. And the developer have an idea that they, they want to, 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 uh, to develop a tool where they can scrap all the data from Twitter. And after one year, they collected, I think, one billion tweets from uh, Twitter. And also, they tried to uh, integrate to WordPress services and um, other social media. And when they have a huge amount of data, so they start to think, OK, so we have the data. What are we going to do with this data? And then the, the idea that let's turn the data into some kind of uh, knowledge that feeds back to, uh, to the user. And then that's how they come up with the uh, SUSE AI. So we have a database, and just to get AI, AI basically uh, query different questions and give you the answer. Uh, let me go back to this slide. What's in that have? Um, so when st uh, when we started um, Suzy AI in the first place, so we thought, that, oh, okay, so this is, might be a cool thing to do. Is it a hobby project for some developers? But it's getting more and more interest from the community uh, because nowadays so you can see that uh, people talk about uh, uh, the smart speaker conversational web. So uh, a lot of researchers say that okay, so the best way to communicate is in communication is not like typing things online, but it needs to go back to our original communication method, which is speaking. And uh, they want to build, um, a lot of people out there build solution for uh, conversational, how you can interact with your device, different devices through voice. And uh, this project becomes uh, uh, one of the things that we that, that we think could be a, a solution for, for open source. Right now, they, you have the uh, Google uh, Assistant, you have Alexa, but these are from very big player in the market, and uh, there's concern of the community that they want to don't want to to release the data, and they want, don't want to depend on the uh, dominance. So that's why there's several initiatives out there in the community. So there's uh, not so the AI, not only the uh, the solution, but uh, I can see like Zara or many other services, and we also want to be part of the train. So uh, everyone can decide to, to to contribute into the movement, and the Force Asia com community also want to do that. So our whole idea is we develop a solution that uh, the user or business can deploy in-house. So you don't have to rely on the server of Google um, or Amazon. You can set it up. It's completely uh, open and free. You can set it up on your uh, local machine. Uh, it's built with different um, um, APIs that you can uh, plug into your existing uh, system. Uh, if you are aware of how people write the skill, but I will go a little bit in detail, I will show it later, uh, how people write the skill for Alexa. So they have different, all they write, how they write like action on Google. So we also have like follow the, the, the similar uh, flow, but uh, we make it very easy for the community to contribute or write a skill to CCAI, uh, which I will show in a little bit. And then um, it works on an offline network, 
and uh, we do not relies on uh, a, a number of engineers who stay uh, in one room. We, 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 we open it up to, uh, for the community to contribute into the process. Uh, at the moment, so uh, Susie works on various devices uh, and support text to voice, media, image, videos, and various uh, interactive forms. This is uh, a screenshot of uh, uh, Susie on Android. Okay, so this is um, uh, the, the back infrastructure of how we build Susie. Uh, the most important part of the Susie AI is the Susie server. So where they are uh, collecting different questions and query and processing uh, the back-end database to give you the, the right answer. And uh, on top of that, we have the uh, skill uh, CMS, which is, I mentioned earlier how like the tool uh, set where people can write skill, uh, write the knowledge to, um, um, for Susi. And uh, so we have, uh, have working on like different client for the web chat. Uh, we, be, we have an Android application. If you look on the, the Play Store for, for Suzy AI, we have a Linux apl uh, application and we also uh, we have Android um, uh, iOS application. And we build an extension to uh, Google Drum. So if you go to Google Drum and you can install the extension, you can talk to Suzy directly instead of going to the web chat. And we also build a, a module for the um, uh, Magic Mirror project. Anyone who's of the Magic Mirror project? Uh, it's an open source hardware that uh, if you, you, that you, when you stand in front of it, it recognizes your face and you can speak to it. And we build a module, which I, I will show in a little bit. And we also implement different chatbots um, uh, on media services, so you can talk. You don't have to go directly uh, to Susie web server to talk. You, you can chat on Facebook, um, Telegram, Fiber, uh, Line, many other uh, services. And uh, yes, I can show some of these things that we built. But before that, I want to take, um, excuse me, I'm going to get my note. <laughs> that? Okay, so at first, let's see the uh, Susie web chat. How do I turn this off? Susie web chat. Okay. Susie. Okay, so on the Susie web chat, you can see if you go to chat at susie.ai, um, let's see how if it works. Hello, I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, so what you can see, so if you can see here, if you only log into, um, if you just um, go to the web and uh, if you log in, you sign up for an account, there are more features that you can see. So we have built a, a dashboard here and also like different settings where you can change the color. You can, um, I can show you a little bit on, on, on the web um, application. So, um, yeah, so you can uh, change the theme, uh, color for the web app, something like that. Yeah, and then uh, you can define if you want to have the uh, speech input on or not. Uh, yeah, so. And then you can also, um, I, I believe there's a, a server function here, but I think I'm not logging into the admin tab. Yeah, so basically this is the, um, the web app. You don't need an account to try it, it out, but if you uh, create an account, there will be more function that you can uh, customize. Okay. And another thing next that I want to show is the um, extension. Yeah the attention scrum board. So if you, uh, all the clients that I mentioned on the uh, slide just now, all the thing that we built here, you can easily find it on the Force Asia GitHub. If you go to um, GitHub and type in Susie, 
and there are various uh, repository that you can go in and, 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 and look at uh, the code, or there's a guideline that you can install. Uh, anyone know how can I turn off this notification on the setting? That's so weird. Yeah, okay. So, um, and then uh, let's do the drum. So, right, so just before I also, I already um, installed the chat earlier. If you can see here the attention that on drums, I'm on now on drum. Uh, let's see, drum chat board attention. So basically, you just need to um, clone the repository uh, and go to the uh, drum extension uh, developer uh, mode to, to upload the package and it will appear here on the browser. So you can chat directly with Susie here. That is the extension for the Chrome. And then the next I want to show is the uh, Magic Mirror. So Magic Mirror, uh, which is something that already uh, played in the beginning. So we basically developed a, mo a model to um, interact with the extra existing service on uh, Magic Mirror, and it works. So th this project is done by one of our um, students of Google, some of code. Uh, from India. Let me play this. But in the beginning, in order to uh, stack this service, I think uh, the guy. Um, okay, so one second. The problem is there are too many tabs open. So Susie can also remember things. Susie, how many galaxies are there in the universe? It takes a little bit of time to go to the audience. So. Okay. So Susie can. So basically, you have an idea. So we built a module for the um, uh, Magic Mirror, but it was the project that many months ago, and uh, if you want to try out, and you also want to improve this uh, uh, application, you are more than welcome. So our code are on like MMM Suzy AI. Uh, you can check out that for if you want to build your own mirror. Uh, another thing that I want to show is the, the bot. The bot with uh, Facebook. I don't know if I have here. So uh, this is the bot that um, that you can install on your Skype. I don't use Skype, so this is the feed I cannot show directly. But this is the video that somebody already make how they integrate uh, Suzy on Skype. Given the description below to add Suzy AI bot to your contacts. So the reason why I show this video so that, um, so that you can see that people are working on it and actually working. Uh, when you go to the website and you test out the, the, the chat and it is not be able to give you the answer, it's not because it's not working. So all the process are working. In order to get the correct or perfect answer, you, we need a lot of different skill and data that depend on the community to, 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 to develop on skill. And our uh, repository are continuously seeing with the, the development. So every day or every hour, you can see new answer or people change something uh, on the service. Okay, so, and this is for Skype. And it also works on uh, Viber, uh, Facebook, and, any, um, and, uh, and many like, social media services. What else do I want to show here? Okay, so let's continue with the skill. Uh, this is how the skill CMS look like. It's uh, if you uh, Google, uh, if you did before for Alexa, you should see that it look exactly the same. The uh, the, the skills is, is CMS. Um, let me show it's a demo live to see if it work. 
uh, anyone understand what skill, what is a skill? So do I need to, uh, so a skill basically uh, an ability that allows Susie to perform a certain task. So a line of code that, that you, you write to tell, and so every single skill will answer a specific question. Uh, so this is our uh, uh, skill CMS. Uh, there's many skills that develop by the community, but uh, we can take a look at one skill to see how it's structured. Okay, so if you go here and then there is an edit button, you click to edit and then you could see um, what inside the skill. Uh, so normally a skill includes of two uh, two parts the the, the the intent and the handler so the intent basically um, the, part, the the question the question or, or the text that you want the, uh, the the AI to 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 perform a task and the the handlers uh, add the at the performance of the AI. So you fit the, 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 the question and then the handler will give out the answer or performs uh, 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 your requirement. Uh, yes, so this is so by default. So we have uh, a template. So let's say this is uh, you look at one existing skill by another developer, but if you at one point want to create a skill yourself, you can do it very easily. There is an uh, create button here. Um, so you can choose different category, language, uh, set the name for the skill, um, set an image for your skill, and below here, the way you can write. Not on the top, this is uh, to define the skill, but start from here, you can start to write uh, different answer, and then you, you can also, it also be in with, um, uh, JavaScript, so you, you can call JavaScript and uh, uh, or call different uh, external APIs. The, there is a tutorial here on the on GitHub on how to build um, uh, skill. There are various steps. Uh, let me take a look here. So you can see the skill format. And uh, the tutorial from level one to the 11. So you, it, it, there's come from fixed answer. For, for instance, emo, it, uh, ask for emotion or ask for a, a definition. I don't know if OpenFast has a wiki page. If you have a wiki page, most of the um, question that come with what is the, def the definition of a nails or a job object will come from the uh, wiki data, but if you don't have uh, already uh, data for, for in that context, what you can do is you can write a fixed answer to tell people, or let's say, what is the uh, open fast or um, or how do you feel today, this kind of thing. And another thing that, that, that we have defined is the um, uh, random answer. So it also very simple that you can uh, that you can do, but I, I, I think I can show it uh, later on the chat board. And then you can also uh, store the data in um, variables, uh, do pattern, uh, and make the standard for each uh, variable. All the tutorial that you can find on the uh, GitHub Suzy uh, skill tutorial. And then what I was else that I want to show here? Let me continue. It's, so we I, we can go back uh, at the end if there's more time for that. Uh, a Azuzi chatbot. So another thing that we implemented last summer is that you can create uh, uh, the service allow you to create the chatbot. Okay, let me look here. Again, you need to log in with an account in order to do that. So this is to build a skill. So whenever you build a skill, it will automatically integrate on the server. So it will be available online. So at the moment, we are working on the review process. At, right now, anyone can just try any skill. And it will go directly to the server. And it will fit on to the web uh, client. Uh, uh, and uh, the, next to the skill is the uh, Bot Builder, which has built a chatbot for your website. For if you have a if you have a service that you want to have a contact or um, uh, FAQs 
that have somebody to answer to your customer. You can use the surface, everything is free, and you can have it on your uh, local machine. So I can show you how easy it is to, to create a, a new bot. Um, we have different templates that you can choose from, or you can just create from a new template. Okay, so uh, in the creating bot template, there are four different steps from the build, design, configure, and to deploy. On the right hand side of uh, the window, you can see a review menu. Um, on the review menu, you can also like customize uh, how it looks like. So let's say I can try, let's do communication. English. Mm, manifest. Manifest support, maybe. Okay. And then basically, uh, this is uh, the configure feature of the bot. It's very similar to what you raised, this, uh, the, what I showed you on the skill CMS earlier. But with this one, you can interact. It will come with a code in the end to interact into your website. So what are you going to do here? Uh, let's say um, you can write in any question. So what is um, open fast? But another thing is, uh, is that you can't have, uh, there are several ways that people can ask a question. So what is open fast? So, so, so the skill are based on rule base. So basically, as many questions as you write, it will, it will cover a lot of cases in the world. Yeah, so um, let's say, and if you, we define is uh, for each random question, you can separate it by a vertical bar. So let's say you have a vertical bar here. When the, you ask uh, the application what is OpenFast, it will give an answer, or you can say, so uh, tell me about OpenFast, and it will come uh, up with, it will come with the, right, uh, the same answer. Or you can define another question right now, and you can see that I put capital on the first character, and if, because it's all rule-based, if you don't tie it exactly, it might not be able to understand. Yeah, and also there is no space in between. So I can add something else. So I I can change the format of the of the character. What is open fast, for instance? As over the time, when many people uh, ask and give the answer, it will understand. But in the the beginning, when you start uh, the service, so you you what you would want to do, you try to think of as many possibility as possible. Yeah, and um, yeah, something like that. And uh, and then it is so. So what I'm doing right now is to make a skill for a fixed uh, question and answer. I could say, um, um, "Open fast is the best uh, open source event in the Balkans." So that's one thing, and then I, it's again, so if you have want to have random answer, this could be one answer, but you could have another answer. For instance, it is, uh, it is the biggest tech, the biggest um, tech event in Bulgaria. Okay, so this is uh, one skill, and then what we can do is we can test uh, to see if it's work here on the review. It's open fast. Okay, so basically that's how easy it is you can build a skill. Uh, so if I don't want that, I can ask another question. Tell me about open fast. So do you see why is that uh, that's not appropriate to discuss it right now? Why it's come up with this answer? Because I have a space in between. So in order to cover all the possibilities, as many questions that you, that you would, it will make it more accurate. So tell me about open fast with no space, and hopefully, yes, so it will come up with uh, the right answer. Uh, this is level one tutorial on the side, but there's many other things that you can do. You can do pattern, uh, pattern in a way that, let's say, what is could be anything, uh, anything. I have no idea. 
So let's say if it works. So again, uh, what is what is uh, Susie? Yeah. So this is how you, and this is something that run on your local server. And then yeah. So just one example. And then how you gonna uh, how you gonna make that chatbot into your website? I will go to the next step. Okay. Let's go to next. Uh, the design of background. Let's see. Okay, so uh, you can see here, you can just in that review of the chatbot, so there are two um, components. So uh, the design interface, the color for the user, and something for, uh, for Susie. I can change the logo of Suzy. So to have, you can, it's, uh, you can upload your own icon or image and you can also change the color so it matches your, the design of your website. Yeah. And then after that, you can um, move to the configuration. Okay. So you can decide whether you want to allow the bot only on your own site or, or to include it in the SUSE default skill, which is that it will go directly to our server, but let's not do that. So it's like, and then you can type in the domain of your website here. Yeah. Right now, I, I put it blank because I don't have the website in mind. But, but then when you go to deploy, this is the, the text that you can copy and paste into the body of your website. And this is how you can make a chatbot. And it will, it will appear on the right corner of the site. Let me see if I have an example here. No, yeah. Okay, so that is the bot. Any question? Okay, so the next thing that I want to show, uh, show you is the uh, Susie speaker box. This is another thing that we um, work on. So we, we thought that, okay, so uh, in order to uh, get people more excited about the project, so we decided that we make a speaker out of it. So this is a prototype. For several weeks, we have different developers from Germany, from India, and Sri Lanka. They try to think of, okay, what kind of components? So people basically use what they have at home, try to build up something, and at the end, we decided, okay, so let's build it with the Raspberry uh, Pi to have uh, the first prototype. And I'm gonna show you the video, how is it built? Yeah, so, so, so basically you can uh, pick up any like mini size speakers uh, that are available in the market. And uh, we have it with the Raspberry uh, Pi 3 Model B. And then on the side, um, on the left hand on the left hand side, there is that um, audio core. Uh, uh, at the end, I will show you the website and the face uh, plate that you see here, the the blue color printed, uh, we, we have the, the design in it. It's available online, anyone can print it at home or you have a fab lab here, you can go to uh, 3D printing and print it. And uh, another component on this is we have an SD card uh, to this and the uh, mini micro um, uh, cable. Yeah, so basically you can build it uh, very quickly to have uh, a speakers. And I, I also brought one with me if you want to take a look later. Okay, 
so at the, so this is uh, all the component that inside the, the device and also a link where you can buy it if you want to try it out at home. Uh, please do so and give us uh, feedback or if you have any uh, uh, different way that you, that you could build. So our idea that to make something very simple that allow people to have a device and also install SUSE to test it out and then give a feedback. At the moment, the, the goal of the speaker only be able to play one rule, which is to play a song. To play music, if you get the, 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 the uh, if you have a Google uh, uh, at home, uh, you can see that even though uh, it's quite uh, established and it be in the market, sometimes when you ask it to play a song, or of a different language or of uh, like pop song, it's often like not be able to perform the task. So instead of like covering all the skill around the world, whatever question, we only want to focus for the speaker to play music. Majority of the people who get the device. I, they mostly use you for, for music, yeah. Okay, and then what else that I want to show? Okay, so um, what do you, you oh, that would, what do we use for, so there are two different uh, things, text to speech and then speech to text. So text to speech, uh, like you, you know that it must like easier uh, than the other ones at the moment. For the text to speech, we use, um, uh, Google, we use Google Watson, and for the SUSE AI um, um, on the iOS, we use the AV Foundation API. Uh, it's just a service uh, of, uh, by Apple that they build for developer. You you can check it out. And for uh, the offline, to work offline, we use uh, uh, an open source uh, um, platform that's called FLight. Uh, FLight is um, a project that developed by um, the University of, um, what is the name? Uh, okay, so it is the derived version of the festival application. Anyone know that about the festival application? So it's basically a lightweight uh, text-to-speech engine for uh, Device, embedded devices like Raspberry Pi. I have the link here. I will share my slide later and um, you can uh, check it out. So we do not actually build everything ourselves. So, 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 so we look at what are valuables uh, uh, out there and integrate it into our service. Uh, okay, so this is for the text to pitch and then for the pitch to text online again. So we use uh, at the moment, Google Watson and, and Ping for the apply, we, we use the pocket uh, speech. Two minutes. Um, um, yes, so um, what else that I have? I have two minutes left. So let me see if I, what else that I want to. Uh, okay, so that pocket spin is also de developed by the University of um, Canary Mellon in the U.S. and uh, that, that we on top of the festival, which is built by the University of uh, Edinburgh. And this university, they actually have a lot of research on um, uh, speech recognition. So uh, if you want to look into it more, there is a link here that you can uh, take a look. Okay, so. Two minutes. Uh, okay, so at the end, this is uh, our community. So what we've been uh, doing so far, we give talk of, uh, about SUSI at different uh, events, and we hope that uh, the goal is that to get more feedback and if people can have to to engage into the development, everything is uh, available on GitHub. So if you are interested in any part, any clients, or even the, the, the server side, you can start to look through the issue and. Um, and uh, contribute to the project. So what we see as the advantage of uh, SUSE compared to the existing service is that run, it's run on like all the device or platform, or, which is something that we hope um, for the future, and it could be uh, plugged into existing solution of uh, companies or person, for personal uses. Uh, it's built by the community. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of knowledge and we also cooperate with other open source projects uh, to use their existing component. 
uh, this is some of the link of the project if you want to uh, uh, to look more into it and we have several videos that are available on YouTube uh, yes and let me show here a little bit okay so this is our um, uh, website the blog is where we store all the documentation on various projects and if you go to the force ASO blog and you type in Susie voice you will get all the article uh, regarding the voice uh, of Susie and one thing that I want to say here that for the um, hot word detection hot word detection is mean that uh, you want to call the AI, let's say you call Google, hey Google doing something, so this, uh, or you can say Susie, or you can define your own hot word for your application. The, the software that we use for us is Snowboy, uh, also an open source solution, if you are interested to look into that. Okay, and um, that's it for my presentation. Thank you, HP. Now, is there anyone in the public uh, for a question? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, first of all. I have a question regarding the skills. Uh, how flexible can a skill be? Uh, because from the demo, I got the impression that uh, it's mainly used for chat, may connect it with some kind of backend, for example, and uh, uh, maybe use it for monitoring or query some database or something like that. Uh, okay, so let me uh, show you. So how flexible it is with the skill. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, you can, uh, so if you look on uh, assisting service like Siri or Google, mm -hmm. so basically if you'd ask them for a web, uh, let's say the weather information, so what they did, they also call an external okay. API. And it's the same with Suzy. But I want to show the future, what we plan to do with that skill. Um, okay, so here, when you look at uh, the skill uh, the skill set, so you have uh, uh, the uh, uh, guideline how to call for the external SBI, but then so we we have more into the, the more action type that you can store the data, that you can store the data, and then for the next step that we want to do is we have the problem solving dialogue, but this is be, like being under de developed. So right now, most of the tasks that perform are called, like, as you said, like for an external database. Okay. Yeah, but then uh, how it can work offline when you install Suzy, you can you also install the skill on your local machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you only use text to speech or normal texting, you don't need to connect to the server online. But at the moment, because we use the service for of Google or Watson, so if you do speech to, to text, you need on an online service. Okay, yeah. I got you. But uh, if you look here, there are different uh, um, uh, process that we define how the skill could be developed in the future. So we have the expert system with back checking. So it means that it will learn from the answer and it will come up with its own question and answer. Mm -hmm. And it's like the future. Uh, okay, plan. so right now the natural language processing is also external? Uh, so right now we have not integrated the natural. Uh, okay, uh, just parsing and regex and. Uh, yeah. Simple, simple yes. kind of. Yes. So, so, but most of the cases, as I mentioned, if you look yesterday, I also talked to Marion about uh, like natural language processing. So, a lot of researchers they spend a lot of money and resource. Let's say if you want to call for one language, you know that how much time and resource need to put in in one language. And we are a community. We are not Google. So our idea is not like we don't want to compete with Amazon, but we want to to show the people what is possible. If you have the community that cover all the questions, that possibility, so not everyone will at one point will come up with something very weird. But if you follow the rule base and patterns, like being sure here, you can cover maybe 80% already of the, yeah, of the cases. Okay, so we have a little time, so one more question. Okay. Thank you. My question is about hardware requirements. Uh, I'm sure some people have made small hardware boxes with voice recognition and reply working offline. Can it be done on a small piece of hardware like Raspberry Pi, or it has to be a bigger computer? Uh, could you say it again, please? Yeah, uh, how intensive uh, is the requirement for hardware in order this to work? Ah, okay, so uh, the, the hardware, so right now it's work with uh, Raspberry Pi. 
Yes, but uh, does it have uh, text to voice, voice to text, the database, everything inside? Uh, right now, it only plays the skill to play music. Mm -hmm. So yes. So they have uh, we have an, an SD card inside the Raspberry Pi where we store the skill. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, we've got no more time. So thank you again.